Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Change in the weather. You might be able to see it's raining a little now. A grey day. And talking of rain, it seems that there may well be rain on the parade of Harry's wife as we near her appearance in Indianapolis. As I understand it, ticket sales have not been going too well for this event and that many remain available. Undoubtedly, Harry's wife will be aware of that failure. How does this make her feel and what might her response be to the fact that this event supposedly attracting circa two and a half thousand people in Indianapolis, isn't selling out like hot cakes. Well, as you know, in parts passing, I analyse the fact that she's appearing at a dinner, a luncheon, whatever it might be, an event, at a hotel in Indianapolis, not selling out 13, 14,000 seater stadia uh, alongside Michelle Obama and people like that. So I've already analysed the fall from grace to some extent of her not being at the level that she thought she would be. So you can understand that in parts passing. But what's her reaction to news, for instance, if she would get in touch with the relevant people and ask, how are ticket sales going? Now, it well may be that the individuals dealing with her are well versed in her behaviours, well versed in the expressions of fury that they've exhibited and they know better than to give her the direct truth. And therefore, they may well engage in euphemistic explanations of uh, encouraging sales, and we're nearing capacity, and there's a lot of firm interest, etc., without actually telling her the truth that many of the tickets remain unsold. However, if someone were to explain to her, if she were to ask directly, how many tickets have been sold and how many remain unsold, and they were to tell her the truth of that, and she learned that it is far from a sellout, that would amount to challenge fuel. The information that's given to her is being conveyed by somebody, therefore that provides her with some fuel because they are reacting to her. However, the news is not good. She, in her deluded word, believes that everything that she says is of considerable import and relevance and that everybody should be chomping to get hold of this information and should be desirous of getting involved in such an event to want to hear her beige words of wisdom. The fact that so many people are not is not any shortcoming on her behalf, of course. She does not think to herself, ah, this is because many people are not interested in me or they don't like me. What I've been doing, the things I've been saying about the royal family, my grasping, merchandising behaviour, my lack of talent, oh dear, all of those chickens are coming home to roost and this is the result of it. I've only myself to blame. There is no such admission or self-reflection by Harry's wife, neither in public and certainly not in private either. Instead, she will lash out. You're not marketing it properly. You're not giving me sufficient PR beforehand. You haven't sold it correctly to the people. What are these people doing at the event? Why aren't they pushing it harder? So initially, having received news that sales are not going particularly well, the response will be, it's somebody else's fault. This should have sold out weeks ago. I am an icon of this age. And if it hasn't sold out, it's not my fault, it's your fault for not marketing this properly, not giving it the support that it merits. And therefore various staff members, people in the organisation, perhaps will be lambasted, criticised. They will be belittled for this apparent failing on their behalf. If people try to explain, it's rather difficult. Times are tight for people at the moment, times are difficult. People don't have that level of interest. It's coming up around Thanksgiving and Christmas. People have got other financial priorities, etc. She isn't interested in that. 
those are just excuses and they'll be waved away with a dismissive, dismissive hand. People should be paying to see me. And it's your fault not making it happen. But what then, after asserting control in that moment by blaming somebody else for the failings of ticket sales, what then if the situation doesn't improve and that they are going to be empty spaces at the tables as the event itself nears? What then? Well, quite simply, that cannot be allowed to happen. There are various options that are available to Harry's wife because, of course, the prospect of it not being a sellout, considerable gaps in the audience, would wound her. It tells her she isn't popular. It tells her that people aren't interested. And that, of course, threatens her sense of control because it signals to her that she's nowhere near as important as she thinks she is. And her narcissism must do something about that potential threat of turning up to an event with noticeable gaps in the audience. The first option, of course, would be to potentially lie about attendance so that the outside world is told that it's a sellout. There's one way of dealing with it, but it doesn't deal with the fact that she stands there looking at empty spaces at tables or a reduced number of tables. And therefore, that has to be addressed in itself. The most likely response is for there to be fillers, that various staff members are told they have to attend, that various people are actually paid to attend, similar to the rumours that were swirling around those that were in the audience at the One Young World Summit at Bridgewater Hall. It's certainly something that a narcissist would engage in, the creation of the appearance of popularity, and it doesn't matter whether people are threatened, persuaded, cajoled, or even paid to attend, so long as it looks like a sellout, so that it can be declared a sellout, so that she can stand there and preach to all of these people. Of course, you would think, well, if she's aware that people have basically been given freebies or even paid to attend, surely she must know that, and therefore that impacts upon the knowledge that it's a sellout. What you have to remember is that if she issues such an instruction for that to happen, and it could be that it's done without her knowledge in order to play cater, of course, bear that in mind by the bajackal staff that are around her, but assuming she issues that diktat, she will be doing that for the purposes of ensuring she's able to assert control over the outside world by saying it doesn't matter so long as we fill it so that we can tell the outside world that it was a sellout. And that enables her to nullify any potential threats to control as a consequence of the outside world reporting on the fact that it didn't do very well. On the day itself, her narcissism will not focus on the fact that the people who are listening to her, numbers of which are purely paid to be there, it'll ignore that fact and just focus on the fact that it's a full house and therefore telling her she's marvellous, wonderful, and all of these people have paid to attend. Yes, that is the level of delusion that Harry's wife's narcissism operates at. So the first port of call is likely to be to try and fill the gaps, get the sort of bodies in there, whether they're waxwork dummies or stuffed scarecrows, get people in there to make it look full. The alternative, of course, would be to assert control by withdrawing from the event. Of course, she will not say, I'm not turning up because sales haven't been very good. That is an admission of a disaster. And with admission comes accountability. And as you know, that is a threat to control. So she can't do that. No. What she will do is come up with an excuse of being, for instance, unwell, or there's a crisis with the children or such like, so that she's had to pull out. It wouldn't surprise me that if in the contract that has been forged between her and the organisation, there is a clause that either permits her to withdraw, with her stating whatever reason it is, if sales haven't reached a particular threshold, or that there's some form of financial penalty that's imposed on the organisation if they don't get a certain number of sales, and therefore, in, or, or number of attendees. And therefore, to in, in, in order to avoid that penalty, the organisation will ensure that they have a packed full house come what may. It wouldn't surprise me at all if there was a contract that existed to that extent to always ensure that the organisation is forced to make sure that it's some form of sellout, a packed attendance. Harry's wife, of course, will have already got her fee for this. I dare say it's not um, contingent upon the number of ticket sales. I think she'll probably operate on a fixed fee basis of saying you pay me this and I turn up and I talk nonsense and then you can make your money back how you see fit. But nevertheless, even though she would collect her fee, it is important, of course, to the narcissist to have that sellout to stand there in front of the supposedly adoring gaze of everybody, those people clapping her, 
making them laugh at the appropriate points when she attempts to tell a joke. And then, of course, to be able to say to the outside world, it was a triumph, it was a success. Two and a half thousand people enjoyed their word salad that day. However, if there's no such contract, or there's a risk of breach, it may well be the case that Harry's wife asserts control by withdrawal and simply saying she's too ill to attend. Flu season has started uh, not very well at all, and therefore she avoids the embarrassment of appearing before a less than full house. And, of course, it's a lie, but her narcissism, or she doesn't care about that. The point is that the threat to control posed by turning up in front of an empty, or rather, less than full, banqueting hall, or whatever it may be, and the consequential reportage of that, must be nullified. Those are two clear threats, and one way to do it would be withdrawing from the event, most likely on the basis of illness. So, those are my thoughts and observations with regard to the approaching appearance at Indianapolis. What are your observations? Let me know in the comments section. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.